In this lecture, we're going to be setting up Active Directory. Uh, we're actually going to be backing up and restoring Active Directory. So the simplest way I can demonstrate this is to just create an account. So an object, basically, or an account in Active Directory. So we're on our domain control right now. So in order to do that, I'm going to right-click on Users. I'm going to go New, New Computer. Oh, sorry, New User, actually. I was thinking of Star Trek for some reason. So right-click New uh, User. Yep, OK. So we're going to call this Backup uh, Restore. That's what we're going to call it. Uh, backup Restore User. How about that? Backup Restore User. Right? Good. Next. Put our password in. Okay. And uncheck that. Password never expires. Yep. Next. And finished. Finish. Okay. So we see it there. We're going to hop over to the comm serve and we're going to set it up. Okay, so we're going to head over to our Active Directory. We're going to click on our default backup set. And then we're going to actually change this. So the storage policy is is where you store it, right? Um, that's down here. Let's see. So storage policy, that would be under storage resources. So you're going to actually where you're going to put it at, the library. I'm going to store it somewhere, right? So I uh, went ahead and I created a, a library called Backup Restore. So we're going to create a storage policy, and we're going to essentially point it to this, um, to that library. So it stores the information there. So we're going to click on the default backup set. We're going to right-click on the sub-client name, go to Properties. And you can click the, you can change the subclient name to whatever you want to change it to. You can change it to, let's call it Active um, Directory. Um, what is it? Uh, sub client. Okay, Active Directory sub client. Active Direct. Yeah. Okay. And um, let's move that up a little bit. Let's push OK. Okay, so that's good. We've changed the name there. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to go down here and we're going to just make sure um, we're actually going to create a storage policy. So you have your libraries and you have your storage policy. Okay, so we're going to right click on storage policy. We're going to do new storage policy. We're doing um, data protection and archiving. Click next. We're going to call this the, um, let's call it backup. Let's just call it backup for the storage policy. That seems to be fair. We're not going to click anything here. We're going to click uh, next. We're not going to use the um, global dedupe engine on this one, actually. We're going to push next. So um, this is what I was talking about. So the storage policy is the path to the container. That's so if you can imagine the library as being just a can, an empty can or an empty bucket basically. That's probably a bad analogy. What I mean actually is a hard drive. So this library right here, this backup restore library or in this case here, library. What that is, is that is a um, one terabyte hard drive, basically. And you want to put multiple amounts of data, for instance, Active Directory data, Linux data, Windows data, and you don't want to have a, a separate hard drive for them all, so you just want to put them all there. And so that's where the storage policy comes in, where you're linking the storage policy with the library. You just put in that information and it's easy to sort out afterwards. So uh, library for primary copy, that's going to be the this library here, the disk library. We're going to click on next. And the media agent is going to be my comserve. 
um, yeah, media agent. I mean, you could if you could choose either one, but um, in this case, my media agent for this one is going to be uh, my ComServe, which is also a media agent as well, as well as a file agent. So we're going to click next. Okay, number of streams. We're going to leave that at 50. So I just want to go over this real quick about the um, aging rules, right? I'm going to go 30 days and two cycles. Let me go over something easier. Let's make it simple for you, right? Um, this is how it was explained to me, and I'm going to explain it this way. So we're going to do it for 15 days at two cycles. Here's what this means. These, um, the green here represents the, what color is this? Let's just, yeah, whatever. So just pretend, right? So 15 days, right? This represents 15 days. 7 days, 14, 15 days. So the full, what will happen is the two cycles have been met. So it, it has to have both. It has to have 15 days and two cycles, right? So here's how that works. What will happen is um, after 15 days and two cycles have been met, it's going to delete the, the old data or age, actually just ages it off. And the two full, or the cycles mean a full, meaning, okay, this is one cycle here, this is one more cycle, or actually it's this, yeah, this, this, from one full to the other, that's one cycle. From this full to the other, that's one cycle, that's two cycles. So what will happen is, um, when it gets to this full here, then it'll age off this other data. I'll, I'll demonstrate. Let's just assume, uh, so this is one cycle, stops here. This is one cycle, that's two cycles. One cycle, two cycles. So when it gets here, when the full, you know, it, it does it again where it backs it up, right, and all that, or the time has elapsed. So it gets here, let's just say, and it's here. So let's just assume it's here now, right, this date. What will happen is, since I have two cycle, I have two fulls now, basically. So I have, well, or two cycles. This is a cycle to here. That's one cycle. Or here is one cycle. This is another cycle. So when I have this other full, what it's going to do is it's going to delete this, right? Let me just erase that. So because the 15 days have been met, oh, I have 15 days. 7, 15, yes. Okay, good. That's been met. Now, my two cycles. Okay. Uh, you know, one cycle, two cycles. So that's when it, it uh, will age off the full, actually. And then when the full happens again, right, okay, what will happen is it will age this off here, this data off. Then it'll age actually this off as well. See how that works? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's it right there. 15 days at two cycles. And you can change this 30 days, 100 days, whatever, right? Or infinite. Don't recommend that. But we're going to leave it at 15 days. 15. Okay, so let's minimize this. We'll get back to our storage policy wizard here. So 15 days, two cycles. So again... Um, the minimum amount of days that you have backups, and then the minimum amount of, of um, actual fulls you have. That's essentially what that means. It's between a full and a full. That's one cycle. So one from one full to the other full, that's a cycle. Minimum at, at you know at least two uh, two cycles or two fulls. So anyway, uh, let's click next. Uh, and we don't want to do software compression for this. It's gonna or software encryption, excuse me. Um, we're not we're not doing that for this. Basically, what that is is it's kind of cool, right? So, what you're going to use that for is you have a you're you're backing up somebody's data from another country, let's say, um, and you have a media agent in that country, and you're going over a VPN, you're going over um, another WAN. Land, whatever, and let's say one of your 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 
your comm service is in Dallas and you're backing up. If you like this video and you want to see more, please jump on to my course, which is, I have two courses. One is at getajobnit.teachable.com and the other course is on Udemy. It's learn backup and restore with Commvault, get a high paying job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications. Thank you very much.